Howdy folks, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to take a look at a long-standing problem that's been in Microsoft Office for many, many years. And Microsoft, they kind of thought they had it, the whole thing sorted out, and now it seems it's back. And it's just that Microsoft Office has the ability to run macros that are built in Visual Basic. And long, long time ago, way back in the 90s, this problem first surfaced where people would build malicious Visual Basic macros, attach them to a Microsoft document, and email them out. And then these, uh, these macros then would automatically activate as soon as a person opened the email. And it would do all kinds of, of damage. It could do, well, it pretty, lots of different things, you know, from destroying a person's hard drive to uh, just getting into a person's email uh, address book and, you know, sending other messages on out, you know, to everybody else or spreading viruses, what, whatever, right? So it was a big, big, big problem. And I actually encountered this problem even just about, uh, it was 12 years ago when I first started working as an office clerk in a shop that was running Windows 2000 desktop machines and was running uh, Microsoft Office version 2007. So we had all kinds of problems back then and it was not, it, it didn't really help any that we had an IT department that was pretty much worthless. They had no concept of security. And so it was up to his office clerks, you know, the few of us who were computer literate to, to have to keep things going basically and, and on the, the desktop computers. But uh, so I, I saw a lot of computers get infected during that time and uh, I helped clean a lot of them up, you know, for my fellow office clerks. But uh, anyway, uh, here at the, the register.co.uk, panic like it's 1999, Microsoft Office macro viruses are back. And so, and we go down here, it tells you a little bit about the history of these different macro viruses. And it does say that we do have some security improvements in the Microsoft Office products that have blocked a lot of these different attacks and propelling macro viruses toward extinction in the process. But down here, here's the bad part. Recently, macro malware has been making a return and uh, this uh, security researcher, Gabor Zapanos, reports that more than half of the document-based attacks seen recently contained VBA Visual Basic viruses aimed at tricking the user rather than a more esoteric exploit code trick to uh, designed to trick Microsoft Office itself. So, in other words, the there have been some security improvements in the Microsoft Office products in order to prevent or help prevent at least these malicious macros from automatic from automatically activating when every person just opened up an email that contained those macros. But now they're trying to trick a person into actually running those macros rather than rather than uh, depending upon them to automatically run. So whether it's done by that, whether it's done by the social engineer like that, or whether it's done by making them automatically run just when you when you download them, it, it doesn't really matter. It, it's still a security problem with Microsoft Office products. So you know, for that reason, I really, you know, even on my Windows machines, I don't like running Microsoft Office. Sometimes I have to, in those very, very extremely rare cases where a client absolutely positively has to have a Microsoft Office uh, formatted document, but it's very rare. I, I haven't even encountered that situation in several years. So the way to just do away with this altogether, really, it's just to ditch Microsoft Office, all right? And if you absolutely positively will never have to exchange documents with somebody that requires strict compliance to the Microsoft format, then you can, you do have a lot of different uh, options. You've got uh, several different free open source office suites 
that you can download and install and just completely replace Microsoft Office. And the most famous of these is LibreOffice. And LibreOffice is a descendant, actually a fork of the old OpenOffice. OpenOffice uh, has had quite a history and uh, it, uh, until a few years ago, was owned by Sun Microsystems, which got bought up by Oracle, and Oracle is not really into into maintaining open source pro projects. So they basically abandoned the project, and then just finally just turned the whole thing over to the Apache Foundation. And uh, but by that time, a, the, their core developers had already departed and forked off into LibreOffice. But LibreOffice, absolutely fantastic office suite, and uh, even if you don't want to or can't abandon your Windows desktop machines there is a version for Windows so you can get it you can get this for Windows Mac or Linux and uh, there and I said before you know about the, the problem with interoperability or or, or with uh, uh, interchanging documents between people who use Microsoft Office well actually you can do that uh, for the most part, it's just really just uh, the esoteric stuff like the esoteric spreadsheets, uh, some of the more esoteric uh, uh, maybe uh, slideshows, you know, uh, PowerPoint presentations, all that. You know, some of them don't really interchange well because sometimes you save a document in a Microsoft format, then it, it doesn't really work well. Although, Although that was the case of, as of several years ago. Now with the current version 5, it's supposed to be a lot better. But I haven't really put that to the test as yet because I haven't really had the chance. But uh, but but I do uh, I do belong to a club, an antique radio collectors club, and I do type up my minutes in uh, LibreOffice, and uh, I'd save them in a in the Microsoft dot doc format. And uh, I send them out, and you know people can read them fine. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's really really great, really fantastic. And it, once you get used to it, once you download it and install it and open it up, you're going to find that you'll probably like the interface a lot better. It does not have that stupid ribbon interface that Microsoft Office has. It just has a nice plain interface the way Microsoft Office used to have. And so I think you'll find it a lot easier to navigate. And it, it is uh, pretty much bulletproof. It is, uh, I mean, it's under constant development. And I've not really encountered any real show-stopping bugs in it or anything like that. So yeah, it's really, really great. So I would encourage you, if you want to avoid the problems of Microsoft Office macro viruses definitely give LibreOffice a try and see if it suits your needs so I think that's pretty much it I thank you for watching if you like my videos go ahead and like and subscribe I would appreciate it greatly especially if you watch your videos without an ad blocker but anyway that's it for now I'll catch you later